Hello and welcome to another Top 5 here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Brandy. And I'm Alan. Today we are going to talk about anti-heroes. Yes. Slash anti-heroines. Uh, mm-hmm. Not being exclusive here. Mm-hmm. Uh, those characters that you sort of hate to love who are at the beginning, <laughs> in the, the core main, of the film. The main characters of the film, but they're kind of morally kind of like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, questionable, you're, do some questionable things. You're rooting things. for them, but you kind of know that you probably shouldn't be exactly. that kind of person. Yes. Yeah. All right. So you want to get started? Sure. Uh, my number five anti-hero uh, is from a film that I don't really love all that much, but I think he definitely fits the idea of an anti-hero. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is Alex from A Clockwork Orange. Ah, uh, okay. Um, a movie Malcolm... I've actually never forced myself to watch because I just think it'll be too upsetting for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's worth watching definitely uh, for the performances, for the direction. Um, I don't really love the film, but I thought Malcolm McDowell's performance in it was very well done. Alex is sort of the anti hero who's kind of on the extreme, you know? He's a murderer. He gets <laughs> arrested and convicted for murder, for rape, and all of that. And um, he kind of goes through this process where he gets brainwashed to hate things that are uh, evil, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I understand what Stanley Kubrick is, is going for. It's like, oh, should we you know, try to change people from who they really are, or should we keep them um, as, as their natural selves? That's kind of the question that the film's going with. Um, I don't know if I really bought into that idea, but Malcolm McDonald, uh, Malcolm McDowell in that film is really, really good. So, Cool. I'm cool. probably still not going to wonder. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, okay, my number five more recent film. Uh, one, I think we've talked about how much we like it before. Hustle and Flow. Mm, DJ. Yes. Um, <laughs> you definitely, you know, you want him to be that, you want him to make a hit song and you want him to get his demo into the hands of the right people. And even if it, he even if it involves pimp. pimping girls out he to get is money. A pimp. <laughs> Why am I rooting for a pimp? Like he's a horrible misogynist, just like he gets mad and like throws one of the girls out because she's like, this song isn't very good. Like, I mean, he's he, kind of awful. He makes a girl go into a store so he can, like, get a <laughs> microphone. It's like, man, it must be really hard out here for a pimp. To, like... <laughs> it's not hard for a pimp. It's hard for a hoe. Yeah. <laughs> he's not the one with the hard part. Okay. <laughs> like, but you still, you still want that song to be a damn hit. Slight. Like, how do they do that? I don't know. They get you. <laughs> I know. I mean, that shows how effective that film was for yeah. a guy who's like a misogynist and and all of that to like you know make us root for him. It's like shows how well it's that a great film movie. was. Yeah. Um, okay, moving on to my number four film uh, character. Um, my number four anti-hero is Eileen Charlize Theron from Patty Jenkins' Monster. Oh. Yes. I didn't even think about this one. She's what a great movie. Character though. who is. We follow through her storyline. She plays this borderline, well, I don't know, even know if you would call it borderline psychopath. I mean, she goes around like kind of selling services just to get the opportunity to freaking kill people. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those fascinating characters. Uh, Charlize Theron just goes through an incomplete uh, overhaul uh, of herself uh, to become this character. Uh, fascinating film. Um, I saw a documentary about Eileen um, not that long ago, and I mean, Charlize Theron nailed that character. Yeah. Um, And it's not just like an imitation or or whatever you want to call it. Um, She makes the character her own, and I mean, I thought it was fantastic. That's great. You know, she starts out being basically just like this unpleasant, down on her luck person, and then, Mm -hmm. you know, you actually feel more sympathy for her the worse her behavior gets because you learn more about what. Stop grumbling. It's a good movie. Spencer. Spencer's uh, showing his... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Displeasure with my pick. <laughs> I thought it was good. Thank you. <laughs> Number four on my list is from sort of a, a very odd little cult British movie from the 80s called With Null and I. Have mm. you seen it? You know, I've been wanting to watch it's, this film forever. And I just funny. keep not getting to it's it. It's just like such a foul mouth farce of, an, of a movie. And With Null is just... I mean, he's... 
hilarious, but he's the biggest drunk in cinema, like, I swear. <laughs> you know, it's just, like, there's a point when they don't have any booze, and he's like, I'm gonna drink this paint or something. <laughs> like, he wow. basically has, like, a bottle of, I don't know what it is, so, like, some sort of household chemical, and he's about to swig it down, and his friend just has to be like, I don't think you should do that. That stuff's worse than meth. <laughs> you know? I think that's funny that his friend has to tell him that you yeah. probably shouldn't do that. And he just, like, he just wreaks havoc everywhere he goes. They go into restaurants and cause a scene they make everyone uncomfortable everywhere but it's so hilarious mm -hmm. and, and you know his friend who doesn't even really have a name in the movie it's <laughs> I, um i think he has a name in the script technically but mm -hmm. just goes along on this ride with this extreme character who mm. it, it's a very funny film you should cool. check it out yeah i mean i've been wanting to watch that film for a while <clears throat> um I'm definitely going to get there one of these days. <laughs> Do it. All right, moving on to my number three anti-hero. Um, I chose this character um, because he's played by a guy that has been kind of, you know, been associated with being the good guy. Um, mm -hmm. The character is Ethan Edwards from John Ford's The Searchers. Oh, what um, a good one. I didn't John Wayne. I mean, when you think of mm -hmm. John Wayne in Westerns, he's kind of like this all-american uh guy who's always you know for virtue and righteousness and everything like that <clears throat> especially in like their previous work like stagecoach or, or whatever um but in this film the searchers uh, ethan edwards is not a good guy he's a racist <laughs> a hardcore racist um yeah he goes on this search to find his niece who has been kidnapped um, by and who Native he's Americans. basically prepared to murder if she's been too sullied by Exactly. Them. The kind yeah. of the, you know, kind of the tension thing that we hold on to is whether or not you'll see uh, Ethan either take her back and return her home or kill her for, you know, becoming uh, a part of the Native American culture. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he goes against um, his nephew who goes along. Uh, with him on the search uh, for the niece for being an eighth of Native American. I mean, even if it's like a tiny yeah. bit, uh, he is like totally against it. Um, it's a fascinating character to, to watch and see what happens to him at that film. And yeah. uh, I think at the end, it kind of hints at uh, what kind of future um, he has, so. Yeah. Good pick. Yeah. Okay, my number three, I know I've discussed this movie before as well. Love it. The original Get Carter, starring mm. Michael Caine. I don't know if people have watched it since the last time I recommended it, but <laughs> if you haven't, um, Jack Carter is a gangster. Mm -hmm. He wants to avenge the death of his brother, who was also not a very nice man. Mm -hmm. And you are basically watching gangster versus gangster, mm. and he's just ruthless. But you obviously, you know, the movie's on his side, and you're on his side, but you watch him go around these like gritty streets of I think they're in London for it and mm -hmm. uh yeah, I don't know. Michael Caine in the 70s was just Michael badass Caine, <laughs> Michael Caine's just oh, badass in general I know yeah I mean not to say that he's lost it or anything <laughs> but like Jack Carter is crazy town <laughs> And, but just like so straight faced the whole time as he's oh, really? doing this stuff just like just methodical is, yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> oh god it's a good movie you gotta Sweet. watch it awesome awesome good pick <laughs> all right um moving on to my number two uh anti-hero um this one i picked because his journey from being a Goody Two Shoes kind of a character to becoming the anti-hero was so fascinating to me. It's one of the classics. It's Michael Corleone from the mm -hmm. Godfather trilogy. I mean, in the first film, he's this army brat. He, you know, came back from the war. He's like the good person of the family. And all his dad wants to do is keep him away from the family business. How however, after the gangster hit on Vito, um, you know, <laughs> Michael becomes slowly, slowly becomes part of uh, the organization, uh, eventually taking it over. Um, and then you move on to part two, where he is fully the anti-hero. I don't, he may even be called a villain in that film, mm -hmm. uh, going to s crazy lengths to freaking keep his, his uh, family, well, not, he's not his, very nice to his wife. Either. His, Organizational family, yes. Uh, not nice to his <laughs> wife. He's definitely not nice to his brother, <laughs> for sure. And then in the last film, he kind of like tries to repent for his sins, but 
if you've seen the film, you know what happens. Uh, crazy, crazy story. Uh, of the a, Godfather trilogy is not going to end with a hug and a kiss. So. Definitely. <laughs> oh, okay. Good one. Mm -hmm. Okay. My number two. Second appearance from Ms. Charlize Theron. Hey. Uh, Maybe Scary in Young Adult, which was one of my favorite movies of this year. Hmm. And, you know, we talked a little bit before we started rolling that if we had been talking about TV, that there would be a lot more options for oh, female characters. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is weird to me because there's also a lot of great female anti-heroes in literature, and I don't know why movies haven't really gotten on that bandwagon. They think that, you know, a female character has to be likable or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um Maybe Scary is not likable, but she she is sympathetic by the end of things because you're just like she just she cannot deal <laughs> with anything in a normal way. She's definitely got problems and whenever she tries to sort of seek out a little bit of help for those, people brush her off and mm -hmm. say just like, Oh, whatever, you're not you're not an alcoholic, you're fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. Just quit it. And um I don't know, I kind of think she was robbed for an Oscar nomination. I know it's not really an Academy-style movie, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I would have liked to see her in there because I thought it was one of the best performances of the year and definitely one of the best movies. Shelley Theron's like, she's one of the best actresses working out there. She's really um, good. You know, I, unfortunately, I haven't seen Young Adult yet, but I will definitely check it out. Um, I, I want to see, you know. Yeah, it's worth it. for Even if it. the material is a little off-putting, it's worth it for her performance and for Pat Oswalt's performance, mm -hmm. too. Cool. All right, moving on to my number one anti-hero. I could not have made this list of anti-heroes without including Travis Bickle yeah. from Taxi Driver. I think, to me, he is the quintessential anti-hero. Yes, he does do a lot of crazy shit in that film, blows a lot of people away, literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but his motivations, if you like, look deeper into it, is, is familiar. It's things we can connect with. He, he feels alone. He wants to make something of his life. He, he wants to do good. He wants to, kind of like how John Wayne wants to save um, Natalie Wood in The Searchers, uh, Travis Bickle wants to save uh, Jodie Foster's character Iris um, from her pimp and the life that she leaves lives even though she doesn't necessarily want to be saved mm -hmm. um, he has these crazy ideas of righteousness and all these grandiose um, thoughts in his head about being God's lonely man and his avenging angel um, it's like it's it's just one of those tragic characters where you understand where he's coming from but what he does is completely despicable and, and crazy and off the wall so he's a little actually crazy uh, he's yeah. definitely crazy, so. <laughs> all right uh my number one is probably the most like lovable character on here but he does a lot of crazy stuff and i love this series of movies actually dirty harry uh. Clint Eastwood as harry callahan um who's not a bad guy but basically if you're a complete misanthrope you probably shouldn't be a cop <laughs> like that's like all you do is deal with people mm -hmm. and you know he's got this nickname dirty harry because he'll basically do all the dirty work that nobody else wants to do you mm -hmm. know and and he definitely crosses the moral line um it doesn't have much patience for codes of conduct or anything like that but it's always to get a bigger job done that you understand why mm -hmm. that's the ultimate goal catch the guy whatever right stop the person who's doing something worse than him and and be done with it but along the way he is not making any friends <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> and, and he you know he just doesn't treat anyone very well including himself mm -hmm. but somehow you know he's still just like so fun to watch and Obviously, the, the first film has a lot of very quotable lines, and mm -hmm. you know I love me some Clint Eastwood. So. Yeah, I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you included him on this list. I think if I had a chance to redo this, I would have added uh, the man with no name. I thought about that. One. Yeah, that was definitely Clint Eastwood's up good there. at Diana Hero. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that was another top five here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Let us know what your picks would have been. Either mm -hmm. leave us a comment or throw us a comment at on Twitter at Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast. And we will catch you next week. See ya.